Greetings and welcome to Die Dragon Die presents Flotsam and Jetsam, Season 1, Episode 4. I am your host, but not your DM. Your DM for this campaign is Adam. How is everyone doing on this fine Sunday? Sunday? What's going on? Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. What's going on there, uh, Chief? <laughs> What's going on there, Chief? Well, there was a... There was a medical emergency on the public transit, and then so the public transit had to stop, and everybody had to walk to the next station to get the next public, to, like, they had to stop the train, everybody had to get off the train, you had to walk to the next train station, where then they would take a bus to take you to the next train station, because the train actually can't get there, to then finish the rest of the voyage home. So there was a, and then I was informed of this, uh, like, at, um, uh, after the point where it's like, I should be going and getting them from the train station. <laughs> I got this text. <laughs> There's a medical emergency. So, yeah. 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 <clears throat> Hence, uh, yeah, the message right before we're, we're supposed to start game. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> uh, that's all right. I watch movies instead. I rewatched uh, um, Army of the Dead and Army of Thieves last night, um, as well as some swamp people the tv show just i redid a bunch of D, &D prep last night because um i opened up the world map to check a name and then lost all my stuff <laughs> because i didn't hit the right save button because i got confused oh, no. <laughs> so, so then i redid the prep um which was all right um and then i i did some some painting i made a beautiful um uh pulled pork um with some uh honey mustard barbecue sauce it was lovely um changing up the spice palettes and you know did some painting generally i'm having a pretty good uh yeah the, i just i just saw the uh the the emperor painting it's fucking good uh yeah trying out trying out some new stuff so new new color new methods of picking the colors trying to make them more contrasty and less samey it's like Joaquin Phoenix from uh, Gladiator? It certainly is Joaquin Phoenix from Gladiator <laughs> after he's been crying yep. <laughs> and putting on the brave face. <laughs> yep. I still haven't seen Napoleon yet. It, it's not out on DVD. Um, I kind of want to wait until it, it's out on physical disc uh, before watching it. I don't want to pay 20 bucks for a version that th three years from now the streaming service could decide I, they no longer own so I no longer own. Like that. that that model. yeah no that model just doesn't work for marty <laughs> no well no. and it, it's like 10 years it, from now when i want to watch the movie again because napoleon's back in like the zeitgeist of cool in, like in go back and watch a bunch of world, things yeah in the video game world <laughs> getting screwed over by those sorts of services happens frequently um when fran if you play games with like movie franchise tie-ins yeah Depending on who owns the movie franchise tie-in at the time, uh, you yeah. may or may not get to download your game. Yep. So there was a period of time where, like, they made a Deadpool sort of 3D action game. It's actually pretty fun. It's a good play. Once every few years, you play the game, you run around as Deadpool, you shoot things, he says stuff. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you may or may not get to play that game depending on whether Sony is having a fight with Disney, is having a fight with whoever the hell made the game. <laughs> so it's... Fitty fitty, I'm with that'll play. <laughs> yeah, there are movies that are hard to just find um, because they disappeared from from catalogs and no, wow. nope. But my current my current gripe is that some movies, because they're owned by primary streaming services, just aren't being released on physical media. Like I've I've got some that are easy to find, and then some that either you just wait forever and then the ones you've been waiting forever just never come uh, so no that's my frustration at the at the with collecting physical media at this point the most i knew that day was coming but uh, yeah it's annoying the most recent movie that i watched speaking of like just watching movies uh so i rewatched um uh, the Seth Rogen one, um, uh, End of the World or At World's End, not At World's End, the, um, the one with the zombie apocalypse where he's playing, like, it's Seth Rogen and a bunch of comedians that are just 
they're, yeah. they're horrible people. This there's the rapture. The this um, is the end. Movie? I watched that. The James with, Franco one. Yeah, the James Franco one. Okay. Um, with Danny that, McBride going nuts at the end. You with Danny yeah, McBride yeah, going okay, nuts yeah, at the yeah, end. Yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. It, it's quite good. Um, then, I, re- I rewatched that one uh, this summer, I think. Yeah, I, I rewatched that one uh, recently. And then my mother was like, you know the 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 Netflix animated children's movies are quite good. And they're very DreamWorks-y. Hmm. And then it's, I think it's because they actually stole DreamWorks' creative team. Right? They just hired them away from DreamWorks. So they're very extremely DreamWorks-y. Uh, and Chicken Hair, which is a terrible name for a character and a terrible name for a film, and a terrible name for, like, it's just a terrible name, is actually a good movie. It is a better Indiana Jones movie than the last two Indiana Jones movies. Wow. Okay. I don't know if I watched the last one, the newest one. Oh. Uh, I, don't I, worry. No, Metacritic says it's like 85% or <laughs> whatever. Yeah, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't believe you. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> yes, don't believe you. <laughs> no, there's there's certain films where... Uh, Not you. <laughs> Metacritic. Oh, I don't, yeah, I don't believe Ron, the... Ron, you know, Ron Tomatoes. Tomatoes? Yeah, Rotten Tomatoes is kind of useless these days, just in terms of... Nope. Yeah. You can love a movie without seeing it. And you can't dislike a movie without seeing it. And then you just remove all that, all the dislikes, and it's like, well, look how good the movies are. And then on other movies, you can't have, you can't like it. You can only dislike it. <laughs> and, then, and then it gets sort of, and the fact that your review company is owned by one of the major movie houses might be a conflict of interest on some of these. <laughs> 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 yeah, it means you gotta sift through a lot of media yourself to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. I, I also resemble that comment, but there are some franchises that I've just given up on, we'll say, without going any further. Um, the Resident Evils are still fun. Come on. Resident Evil 82. Oh. Mila Jovovich is 60. <laughs> I did, I did watch those maybe a few years ago, like up like all the, the existing ones. I don't uh, uh, in a row, and they just got worse and worse the further you went into the trilogy. The trilogy, or it's the, like or the, the septi- septi- quadrilogy trilogy I... or septilogy or whatever. The, the further you got into their their franchise, it was uh, they got worse. I I I, I want to say there's eight of them. Um... It was too long ago for me to really remember why, but I just remember going, uh, like, the, the it, last couple of movies were really painful to get through. There are eight. I'm correct. Okay. It's I may have evil, watched. I may have watched five, and I went, oh, I can't. <laughs> I can't, can't anymore. Evil Apocalypse, Extinction, Afterlife, Retribution, Final Chapter. You always know when there's a final chapter, there's a movie after that. There's, yeah. there's no hope. Well, welcome to Raccoon City, Death Island. <laughs> I think Dude, I made it to fi- I think I made it to final chapter, assuming that that was the last one. <laughs> uh, which which one? Um, which franchise? Oh, I'm excited for 28 years later. Oh. Uh, so they had 28 days later, 28 months later, and then I think 28. Years it's later. 28 days, 28 weeks. Weeks, okay. They, they're they making, a, or I think Sony picked up the rights to build the film and they're working on the script right now. Like, it's not, uh, they're getting ready for, when did it come out? 2001, the first one? Uh, something like that. It was, it was revolutionary in terms of fast zombies. Yeah. And I had a hard time watching it. Um, it gave me a headache in the movie theater. Did it? Well, uh, you're, you're super I, I, sensitive. So I get sensitive. Yeah. So the the film itself was shot with some like uh, low res cameras for some scenes, yep. like highly pixelated low res camera uh, imaging, and it it, it it made me it made my uh, Miko buggy like cross eyed. Um, but it's good. It, it's for me. This is a movie that's better on a small screen because on a big screen it would make me not feel like make my stomach feel funny. Hmm. So. Uh, it's something I'm gonna rewatch when I go back this summer to my movie collection, which I keep in Canada, not here in Seattle. <laughs> uh, I will rewatch Twenty Eight Days and Twenty Eight Weeks. 
I don't remember much from 28 Weeks. I've watched 28 Days, like, 10 times. Like, I, so I know how that movie goes. But, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a high watermark in zombie zombie film the fast zombies is kind of the one of the first it created the it created the infected like yeah. the yeah. the runny disease zombies or rage zombies yep the <clears> idea <throat> of like the zombies aren't dead right because in 20 days later they, they're not like they just die like people so 20 years later i assume I got, I, it's an interesting premise because your zombies should all have died by now like, um, unless the, it's like a disease and it hops vector like it changes its you vector need, you and, need to change vectors like you need a yeah right because otherwise like it's, it, like, it's now delivered through mosquitoes which is horrific <laughs> which makes sense for bloodborne diseases depending on what the final payload requirement is yep my guess um, it will be mosquitoes because uh, we still have malaria today, it's still a thing, and people get it. And, you know, mosquitoes True. are bad. So, so you're saying we should, it's good to, to gas pipes swaths of the landscape to kill the small bugs, or just <laughs> there will be no standing pools of water. <laughs> uh, when I was a get kid, get shot because your bucket is left upside, like right side up in your yard. <laughs> when I when I was a kid. Um, when we went to Disneyland, I couldn't get over how there were no mosquitoes. Because mosquitoes are so common back where I'm from. And it's just like, why are there no mosquitoes? How can there be no mos- How no mosquitoes? <laughs> and it's like, it's Disneyland. They don't allow mosquitoes. <laughs> it's like, how do they do that? They don't allow mosquitoes. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> they didn't pay entry fee. <laughs> oh, there's probably some... Oh I, no! They, so they, they some typically... massive apparatus of chemical or or yeah they 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 spray the region around the parks right and, yeah. and like particularly Disney World like in Florida they were, they used to self regulate their own parks they don't do that anymore because reason <laughs> they used to be their own police force and their own EPA <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, let's do a recap of what happened last game. Last game is called The Broken Promise. Are the promise broken? Uh, a dastardly company of adventurers visits Mulgrimir's tribe with demands for tribute. The adventurers capture Grimsby and Mulgrimir and sell them into the service of a pirate captain. During their voyages on The Promise, they meet Jinshu Sunscale, who becomes a member of their crew. The Promise attacks the Wormwood with disastrous results. And basically... Part of the Promise's crew is now part of the captives of the Wormwood, and um, one of Mark's characters, Grimsby, Mulgrimir, and Jin Shur, are now all captives, I guess, of the dread pirate Harrigan. Harrigan. Um, and a couple of half giants were seen being loaded onto the boat, also captives. And I think tonight we're focusing on their backstories? Focusing on those half-giants. Okay. Black Dog, you've been in intense pain for quite some time. You've been sedated with alcohol and opiates as you sustained an injury but this injury doesn't stop and the drugs don't stop some of like the internal demons that you fight you have memories memories that come in waves uh give me a wisdom check or an int check whichever you prefer Oh, I don't know. How about the plus zero or the plus zero? Oh, perfect. Give me a roll. <laughs> 20 roll. 13. <laughs> you have hazy, hazy memories. There's not too much that goes with them from, like, your early childhood. Uh 
You remember a village of like this bustling village on an island? Um, you remember everything was like bigger? Like you were really small and everything was really big? Um, might have just been because you were a child. Uh, the village itself was built into the side of a like this mountainous peak um, along the border. Um, it, it, you remember it went super high to the sky. Um, you know that people were killed or something bad happened and you were taken away from this place. Give me a second int or wisdom check. 18. You, you definitely remember um, some of the faces of the people that took you away from here. In particular, you don't remember their names, but you do remember some faces. Uh, is there any? Uh, it was a boat full of like there was a gnome and a bunch of dwarves they're the ones who they said that they were you were being rescued is what they told you yourself and oh yeah you were you've got you've got some friends some like people there was four of you who were saved. This is the village where we spoke giant? This is the village where you spoke giant. Okay. You think it was... You, you remember it in giantish being called something like Titan's Peak? Uh, you basically haven't We've been told really not to speak of it as these the dwarves and led by a gnome brought you to a place where you would be safe. You and four others. Four others or four total? Four total. Sorry. Four of you. <laughs> the number four. There was another giant male. Um basically same age as you um he was a like brash and strong but nowhere near as um impulsive as as some like you you took to discipline quite well uh as did he um not quite to the level that that you were able to you remember this there was a woman. Um, her name is Uma. Um, Uma is... She just always seemed to fit in. Um, she's just a very powerful, cheerful, and could make friends of everybody. And was really good at like mediating conflict. Then there was, give me a, give me a diplomacy, intimidate, or bluff type check. Okay. Uh, no ranks in diplomacy, no ranks in bluff, and no ranks in intimidate. Me, I want to say yet. Give me a charisma check. Oh, but a plus three. <laughs> Oh, Black Dog's got the Black Dog's got that Riz on him though. <laughs> yep, the Blood uh, Ranger, right? So you need a little bit yep. of charisma. Uh, uh, Seventeen. There's a Shiduen, um or Sh Shiduen. A he keeps he's a little bit older than the rest. 
and he keeps trying to tell you what to do. He's fairly... Uh, you remember him being um, not not able to get along. He, he wants to be a leader. He wants to sort of run things. You remember training. Sparring as a child. Shulwen. Moving you over to a sparring And, and all three of them are also half giants? They're all half giants. It's a powerful group. <clears throat> you were taken in to like a dojo? Um, it was bigger than a dojo. God, these drugs suck. It was a, a temple, a temple hidden away. You were practicing. Oh, I'm going to you could roll a d8. Gorsh was there. You remember Gorsh? Uh, Gorsh was a, a a monk who you appreciated, and a monk that also seemed very a monk dwarf who was very keen on raising the these half giants. Um, what do you get on your d6? Oh, you said d8 five. Oh, sorry, d8 five. You remember that day that who was there? And I am not making a what's on first joke. Your your practice on this day was being overseen by a Hu Chen and Gorsh. Gorsh was always like encouraging and a role model, and Hu Chen was like a perfectionist. Nothing was ever right. Things were never fluid enough. Quick enough. Uh, give me a unarmed attack roll. Sort of just to, to refer it, like, just to see how well you do in this, this memory of training. Sure. Um, Black Dog at his current build does have improved unarmed strike through his cool. brawler levels do you want one with rage or not it's up to you sure black dog black dog doesn't hold back um, especially if he's fighting shoot a win shoot a win yep uh, you really plus eight plus two for rage twelve Ugh. Okay. Before this particular training session, you remember that Shudwin drank something. Um, he was convinced that he was the best and the strongest. Um, he would be plus four. four. He also rolls poorly. <laughs> uh, but he does, he, he lays a beating in. Um, this entire interaction, um, Hu Chen is very displeased with this brutal display. It's undisciplined, it's uncoordinated. This caused major friction. When you... At, in the arguments and the tussle that interacts here, where there's basically fighting, you understand that there was like this big boiling between some of the figures, and Shudwen ended up being um, ejected from the temple at about the age of 15. Because this of this point. fight? It wasn't necessarily this fight, but this fight was like this culmination of it. Shudwen was using potions to improve his fighting. 
and was fighting with emotion, not with skill or not with discipline. Well, Black Dog didn't drink his mutagen. He's also a mutagenic brawler. So, um... Okay. So he's a, he's a Blood Rager, Primalist 2, Brawler 1, Gestalt Fighter. So it's all about the juice and the rage. So, mutagenic mauler, barbarian. Not lawful. I see. Additionally, you know that he is not pleased with the treatment of the people in this in this temple. Give me a wisdom or int check. D twenty rolls. Thirteen. Oh yeah, it's called the Shattered Refuge. It's a, an island temple off the coast of the warring, like it's, it's technically within the territory of the, the Iron Kingdoms, and they, the Iron Kingdoms have been at war for a long time. It's not safe there. Um, this temple is surrounded by water, um, and tide goes out once a month. On the day tide goes out, you can cross, but it's almost impossible for any normal sailor to basically bring a boat to this island as the, the water churns around the edges of the island continuously. And both of the dwarf and the other guy, um, the guy that was upset, they're both monks here at the... They're, they're both monks. Okay. Yeah, you, you remember there was a, f a few masters uh, at, the, at the temple. You remember fondly Boulder Belly? a rock man as well as uh, you know long way uh, there's a grand master here who is aged and wise in in the ways of fighting black dog um, didn't like losing so he goes about doing all the physical exercises twice to make up for losing and, and this is why who appreciates your work ethic. When Shurdawin would lose, he would blame the circumstance, the scenario, the the wind. Always an excuse for, for losing. Hmm. You also remember there was a city nearby, near the, the Shattered Refuge, called Haven. It is effectively across the, the churning waters. And it is a small city surrounded by mountains, very difficult to get to. And this is where many people hide from war or hide from their problems. What's the Haven? As you grew, and in particular, it was one day when you were 14, you heard the drums in your mind. You heard, you started getting very angry dreams. Dreams filled with feelings and thoughts of remorse and fear and like a lack of power or control. Give me a charisma check as it is a dream. See how much you can remember or have interacted within it. One. These dreams overtook you. You'd wake with you'd awake with your sheets soaked in um, in sweat. Um, you would basically, in your sleep, become a beast. This 
drumbeat and this anger, this fear, this shame? Almost. Shame is kind of, it might be the right word, um, is actually the source of your rage. There's a, a inbuilt inadequacy that just thrums. And when you're left to your own thoughts, it definitely builds. And from the time you hit puberty onwards, it just got louder. Well, I think fighting and working out are basically <laughs> like, 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 like doing tasks stubbornly until like somebody has to tell him to stop. Like, go chop wood. He would then go and chop wood until Dude. somebody tells him not to. He's going to clear the forest. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> At least there's still wood. We're not done like yet. Just stubborn. All right. I'm going to... As your memories become more clear... Strength 20, dex 14, con 16. Yeah, that's pretty physical. Remember that the, the temple itself was actually quite large. It had a big open grounds. I still see Haven. Oh, sorry. There's an open grounds. There's a water feature, like in interior lake. There's a region where you would exercise via water or swim. There's a barracks. There's other monks and children. Um, it is a happening sort of place. Does As Black, you does Black Dog know as he's grown, like, why they were brought here? Is it a bunch of humans and dwarves? Uh, this place is a bunch of humans and dwarves. There's, uh, there's a couple of outliers from the, the human and dwarf. Uh, there's a, um, uh, a Kenku. Uh, as well as an Ored and a Gnome. Where's the Ored? Uh, I think I forgot to bring. There's a Dwarf. Uh, where are you, Ored and Gnome? Here. Uh, your Ored. Your gnome. Boulder Boulder. So the people that rescued me brought me here, but they didn't stay. No, they did not. Okay. Who would you have gone to for answers? Well, I think to start off, it would be the half giants. Like, okay. Shuluan thinks it's a conspiracy. Yeah, they're holding us prisoner. Yep. No other way around it. And I'm just going to pull him over. They're afraid of our power, and they're here to, to slow us down with their stupid teachings and their stupid exercises. We're stronger than them. We should be in charge. We've all probably been whooped by the, <laughs> by the monks before. <laughs> Repeatedly. <laughs> what are you saying is blatantly incorrect. You so can pick up more than they reflexively can. black dogs rubbing wherever he got beat last from the monks. Like his ribs or whatever. I don't know about that. Mm. I don't might... think that's correct, Azuma. We're not prisoners. They don't let us they put us on an island where you can't leave, and every day, it's every day that we could go and wander off the island, they say, "Nope, this is a day we do exercise. Can't go to Haven, prisoners. Can't tell me what to do. Nothing they can tell me what to do. No way, no how. They're scared. They're teaching us how to be stronger. It's like teaching the wind to blow or the water to be wet." We're giants. We're the strongest. Belai in the corner hasn't said much. Under his breath, you hear him, like, he starts dragging 
Please just start naming a few sort of beings that are stronger than giants. Like, it's, you know. They feed us. They give us a warm place to sleep. They train us. There's nothing wrong with this. There's everything wrong with this. We should be free, conquering, laying waste, or raising kingdoms, not sitting in a small room. How old were we when we were having this conversation? Been 14. He was 14, you were 12. Hmm. Black Dog needs 10 wisdom. She's considering <laughs> the words. <laughs> I mean, like, Shudawen at this age is a full head taller than the next biggest, like, yeah. the, the biggest monk they have. But he still gets his ass kicked. Oh, for sure. <laughs> According to him, he doesn't. Why don't you tell that to the master? Hmm. Yeah, maybe I will. They've heard it enough times. They know it's true. I can tell by the look in their eyes. Okay, then. Okay. He leaves? <laughs> like he... Yeah, I'll go tell him. wonder how many teeth he's going to lose. He's not going to tell anybody anything. <laughs> he's going to go try to steal something from the kitchen. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I don't understand, says Belai. I am grateful for the food and the shelter here, but we are orphans. I Everyone here is an orphan. I think you're I think. right. If our parents were alive, they would have come looking for us. People in the village know orphans live here. This is true. Maybe when we're old enough, we could go back to Titan's Peak. We could go back. They don't like it when we ask about Titan's Peak. If we can't beat up these monks, then what good are we going to be out there? There's a whole island at war. There's more than one way to fight. And if we were orphaned, what fucking killed our parents? It is a good question. comes back. He's got a little bit of yeah. uh, grease on his chin. <laughs> she has a has a point. At Damn some, right I have a point. <laughs> someday we'll be too strong. Over the next couple of years Uma graduates to being a monk. Black Dog struggles with the teachings. Bolai left to Haven when he was given the opportunity. The nearby village? The nearby village. You know, Bolai became a, a leader of the townspeople or a champion of the townspeople. He's less concerned about order and structure than he is about, like, doing the right thing was more important than doing the correct thing. I think Black Dog just, even though he's having a hard time, he just is stubbornly, it just means he's not working out enough. 
<laughs> like, like, like he, he might he might be missing some concept, and his idea is work out more, <laughs> just, just, <laughs> try I harder. I yeah. have to be the best one. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Uh, and I I, th I think Belai ended up teaching him how to mix the uh, uh, the the strength juice, the mutagens. Uh, not not Belai, sorry. Uh, Shudwin. Uh, Shudwin, yeah. You learned how to cheat from Shudwin. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he was curious about how you, how do you how do you get so strong for short periods? Like, does that juice actually work? <laughs> and he ended up mixing his own, probably after getting sick on Shudwins. Um, the Shudawen was ejected after a fight with some of the leaders of the temple. And your life went on here for never, another several years. Okay, Black Dog yeah. likes weapons too. Like, he trains with a sword. Um, some of the equipment he has at starting uh, includes a Masterwork large longsword and a masterwork tower shield. He you, fights. He fights with javelins. Um, you get along extremely well with Master Boulderbelly and Master Gorsh. Okay. They both know how to both smith weapons as well as use weapons, and their weapon selection that they're able to wield is most impressive. All right. Well, he's learned some of his. Uh... His one rank in craft weaponsmith, one rank in craft armorsmith. He's he's learned how to look after his weapons and sharpen them effectively. Um, Give me a sense motive roll from a, an interesting interaction that you had. Oh, plus zero, five. Tell me how you feel. <laughs> <laughs> At one point when you were being taught the basics of smithing, it's good. It's good. Yeah, get it, get it red. Not too much. Flatten it out. Okay, now we're going to temper it. We need it to right speed, right temperature. We cool it down. Steel will treat you real good if you treat it right. You're going through the, you're going through these motions. You're following. You're able to to basically smith at a pace that others would have issues with, just by being brutally strong. It also as Gorsh puts it, is the same as doing training. It's a form of training for both body and mind. Um, during this cycle, where you're 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 crafting a um, it's a axe headed spear um, that you're you're making, not a weapon you necessarily use, but you you basically make what is needed <laughs> as as for your practice in smithing. How do you sleep? I prefer to sleep when I'm exhausted. Does he trust Gorsh? Is it Gorsh asking or is it Boulderbelly? It's Gorsh. Uh, is... Boulder, Boulderbelly's assisting. Gorsh is the one who's asking. And is he asking in front of Boulderbelly? Uh, Boulderbelly is in the room. He's not necessarily looking at you. He's also working away. I have dreams. Not unlike the pounding of this metal. He's hiding the fact that he's that he feels ashamed in the dreams for some reason because he doesn't understand that. Yeah. He's translated into he hasn't become a monk. He hasn't. He loses fights like that. He's he's linked to those two things together. Whether that's correct or not, whether it's the correct linkage or not, it's the link that's been made. Yep. It's normal for a man growing up, coming into their own. Do you feel yourself in the dreams? I don't understand. <laughs> Boulder Belly is giggling at the phrasing of feel yourself uh, as he's basically reaching into a, a <laughs> this furnace. Is a, this, is a <laughs> out of... <laughs> this is a scowl from Black Dog. <laughs> That's what he was afraid of, people laughing at him. <laughs> people laughing at him. <laughs> Do you lose control in your dreams? There's a, like, a shameful nod. 
maintaining control is important. Give me a stern look. Black Dog's grinding his teeth. He doesn't want to disagree, but he knows that the strength from his blood, from giant blood, is a path to winning. Do you have any knowledge, nature, or any sort of skill to know things? No. <laughs> a craft weaponsmith, one rank. Craft armorsmith, one rank. He can climb. He can acrobat. Uh, he he knows three languages, none of which are dwarven. <laughs> we don't okay. have the skills for that. <laughs> uh, and then one rank perception, one rank ride. So maybe there's a horse. Two ranks of survival. So and with the plus four racial trait on survival, like he could build fires and live outside and hunt and fish and you know that sort of thing. He knows how to swim, and then he's got his his. Uh, um, bonus campaign skill is Ayujitsu focus he likes having his weapon not in hand and then all of a sudden in your belly <laughs> yeah 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 uh, he likes dueling is basically okay, the... you, you don't understand that there is racial animosity between giants and dwarves okay like you know, that's, that's not a concept that you understand um yeah whatever becomes too much. You know you can talk, right? Yeah. Black Dog is like, is this a trick? Isn't that what we're doing right now? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's like visibly chewing on what the dwarf is saying. Okay. Stop slack, John. Uh, Boulder Belly is like eating a, <laughs> a yeah. piece of like red hot metal. <laughs> Go back to whatever I'm supposed to be doing. Rounding away. Black Dog does develop a basic understanding of the world around him, but it's not taught to him by a monk. There's a man that comes once a month. A man that you typically meet outside the gates so we're going to the shattered refuge a strange <laughs> tangle haired mess of a man oh, that's a great token <laughs> what is that from like uh i want to say year one or something or it's probably uh, year one. Uh, this is this is a this is a mark creation. Okay. Uh, this is colloquially known as Emperor Chuck. It is Charles de Lyon. A people, people call him Emperor Chuck. People call him Emperor Chuck, and the reason why people call him Emperor Chuck is he goes on about. The, an emperor he's not talking about the like the jade emperor that everybody would normally use he's still going on about an emperor who's not even here <laughs> got it <laughs> so, oh an emperor who's not even on this world and this is important because why uh, he talks he tells many stories he sells fish here um, he doesn't like fishing he complains about the smell he doesn't like working, but if he doesn't work, they don't feed him. He, you know, that he was shipwrecked off the coasts, uh, in the in the very dangerous waters that surround the entire region of the Shattered Refuge as well as Haven. So he's a madman. He's effectively mad, but he tells many stories. Okay. What do you think of the bad man who tells stories? Well, he's clearly lost his mind because he has no discipline. He, the discipline, zero. Yes. And he does bring fish. I don't know if you like fish. I, they live on an island. Uh, fish. You, you better like fish if you want me. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, who's my favorite puppy? How you doing, Black Dog? Uh, you've, 
you've grown. Hey, 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 hey. Have I? He's like looking at himself. <clears throat> what are they feeding you? It's got to be what? Six and a half? Rice. Seven? Vegetables. Fish. Yeah, that, obviously they need fish. Uh, it wouldn't happen to have gotten in the line on any boats, right? You know? Lined up a way out. You gotta be getting stir crazy. They gotta be a way off the island somehow. People come. They don't generally leave. I'm not ready yet. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, I, I get it. I understand. You know, you gotta, you know, grow into yourself. You know, you start feeling confused and, you know, it, it, it happens to the children of the Emperor all the time. But, you know, we're all created in his glory. Even, even you. <laughs> Black Duck doesn't call him Emperor. <laughs> he calls him Chuck. If he realizes that Chuck is a for, short form of Charles, he calls him Charles. <laughs> Whatever you say, Charles. Oh. See? Well, we got the week's fishing, but, uh, you know, there are some issues with your friends uh nobody's nobody's seen belay in a little bit people are getting a little bit worried and uh mm. tell me about this uh, well well you're in here you know waxing on and waxing off are you doing a little gesture <laughs> Black Duck scowls at that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sometimes I do have to clean the weapons and the armor. Well, they, You're they, not wrong. Just I, not. He's li literal I, not quite kidding. <laughs> I, was, I was a young man too at one point and waxing on and waxing off was pretty much all I did. I, you know, they, they sometimes say that the, you know, the emperor is always watching, and you gotta put it on a show sometimes, you know? You can see everything. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, no, but, uh, bowl. Bola. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's like a, a snap of his fingers. <laughs> Just puts a gently uh, a hand underneath his jaw so he meets his gaze. You're not telling me about Bola. <laughs> Focus. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, the townsfolk were having issues with things coming in the dark and, and stealing stealing chickens and things and he was going to go and prevent the stealing of the chickens what things some people were saying it was monkeys other people were saying it was wolves some were saying raiders of some sort but who could possibly raid through the mountains it's far too much you know far too difficult so which is it monkeys or wolves or raiders emperor knows Bolai probably knows we don't but, know. But Bolai is missing. No one Correct. else has seen anything. Well, we, we're we hoping to help, you know, find him. And if we're, if we're quick, we can get you back before the tides go out. And, you know, nobody will be none the wiser. We should let, we should let the masters know. Yes. We should. Sure. Masters love me. Um, no, they don't. Praise be the five face God. All hail the Emperor of Mankind. It's just this look of disdain. <laughs> also pity. <laughs> he's, not you, he's, not, he's got this big, the big stick with fish. <laughs> yep. Who wouldn't mind carrying this? <laughs> you should pump it up into the air as you walk. To get more exercise with the weight. I... I don't need... Uh... <laughs> that's gonna push him forward and make sure that he's... That he's basically getting exercise for the rest I, of the way up. <laughs> I, I used to have people do this for me, you know? I, I, 
I would just ask for fish, and fish would come. Don't even know actually how it works. Which is which is why you need which is why you need this. <laughs> Make sure he's all exhausted and sweaty by the time he gets. <laughs> Oh, uh, Emperor B. Praise, we're at the top of the stairs. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll grab a little reed and just sort of... T- <laughs> like... I will do will be a monk master one day. <laughs> okay, uh, you eventually poke and prod uh, Charles de Lyon um, uh, up to the temple to go speak with the uh, speak with masters. Uh, he'll, which... he'll get him to put the fish down before, like he's not going to get the fish brought into the temple. Okay, give me a d8. Figure out which master you bump into first. One. One. Uh, Long Wei Chen is currently, like, meditating by the pond. He's, like, right by the, like, right in the, (laughs) right by the front of the temple. Okay. Uh, Black Dog bows, and then just waits. Charles is looking a little bit, you know, he's fidgeting, and then he kind of does a bow. And okay, he offers a if he didn't get a bow, he was going to get a little swipe from the <laughs> from the reed. That... <laughs> ah, oh, ah, I'm so, yes. Uh, uh, <clears throat> I know that you're there. Charles de Leon, Black Dog, you seem to be Disturbed. What is the issue? He hasn't made eye contact. He's still actually looking in the direction, meditating at the pond. Charles has news that Bolai is missing. Something about raiders. Mm. Or vicious animals. He is not that... sure. I no idea. I would just... You know... <laughs> The reed goes up to his mouth like. I see. Request permission to go there to look for my brother. Permission is granted. It's been a while since you've been to Haven. Uh. I'd also request to visit the armory before going. Will you prepare for raiders or animals or something else? If there's just one of me, I'll prepare for whatever comes. Uh, He's going to arm himself to the teeth and then go look. (laughs) There's, there's no other way. <laughs> animal, sword. Raider, sword. Shield, raider. Shield, animal. It all works. If one marches with war on one's mind, one is sure to find it. Okay. Black Dog interprets that as a yes. <laughs> <laughs> bows and then it is moving to leave dragging dragging charles with him okay uh yeah uh, charles like is sort of fumbling trying to bow and then he tries to put his hand out to... <laughs> yeah i, I just he, he's he's ejecting him from the master's he's, presence he's being moved um does he get okay. paid for the fish like oh yeah there, there there is there is trade that goes on for the fish um okay well he'll tell one of the disciples monthly delivery Fisherman Charles needs his payment. Wait by the dock. Okay. Ah, of course. I will wait by the dock. Um, so, uh, you wouldn't happen to have a, a rapier or something in there for your old Chucky boy? You know, I can throw a throw my dukes in with the best of them. You know, they wanted me here at one point. <laughs> like monk guards and disciples. Okay. Are... He brings them outside. <laughs> Show me your punch. <laughs> well, I'm not 
really the punchy type. You know, he's he's going to make a bluff check. Uh, <laughs> Twenty-two. Uh, are is that? Are you? I think you're. <laughs> he's trying to faint you. Um. So I have uncanny dodge. So I don't know if that helps. Um. Uh, I think faint still applies. Faint. Uh, 10 plus your base attack bonus plus your wisdom mod. Or you could use your sense motive. Yeah, so it would be 13 at third level. Yeah, it's it's not flat-footed. It is you can't add your decks. So, all right. And now he's going to he's gonna try to... He's, you told him to punch you. He's going to try to... He, he's, he's, he's turned around, ducked his head, and now he's trying to basically sucker punch you. <laughs> Uh, you, do you have combat reflexes? No. Okay. Uh, he, he broke the nail, oh, but you're <laughs> you denied your decks. So, uh, AC twenty three. Yeah, he he punched me. <laughs> okay. Punches you in the nose for 15 damage after faking you out. He <laughs> drills you right in the beak. Oh. <laughs> so I'm under the chest, you moron. <laughs> you broke my nose. <laughs> Was it no, non lethal? It's or? not lethal, yeah. He does not have improved on arm strike. It was an obviously <laughs> weird haymaker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, are you okay? <laughs> I was like, oh, are you okay? Uh, I told you. I, blessed be the, to the Emperor. Of the, I am the great fighter. All the women would swoon at how good I fought. The men would swoon too, but you'd have to kind of shoot He just gets you. picked up and dump, <laughs> dumped into the grass. <laughs> Black Dog's gonna add visiting a healer to the to the list of things before he goes. <laughs> I don't know where the armory is, but as you're leaving, you, you could hear it off in the distance. You see that? Yeah, I could show you a thing or two. <laughs> He's talking to somebody else. <laughs> the bigger they are, the easier they are to punch. Oh, well, at least it was unexpected. <laughs> okay. Uh, the, the, to... the seed of maybe stealth has its place has been now um, put into Black Dog's mind. His lessons come through wounds. <laughs> <laughs> in, in, into ten, in, uh, wisdom ten... They come through hard knocks. <laughs> you want to know how I got these scars? You sneaky bastards have a way of fighting. <laughs> no, I, some of that was sneak attack, right? Yeah, that was sneak attack. Okay. It was 2d6 sneak attack. The, so at fourth level, I think the build includes a ninja level or two. Nice. You know, you, you just got <clears throat> cocked by a rogue three. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Black Dog's gonna go visit the healer first to get his nose set at a healing spell. Um, okay, uh, you visit uh, Wu, uh, Yu Chen. Um, she is a, a priestess and a monk. Um, you really push yourself too hard, Black Dog. He disagrees, but doesn't voice his opinion. He just sheepishly stands there bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> You've been given a, a, a wad of linens to, to, to collect the blood that's coming out of your nose. It doesn't look like it's broken. Maybe a little bit. She tweaks it. It hurts quite a bit. There's a bit of a popping sound. Okay. Grinding of teeth. We are all on the same journey. It is a marathon, not a sprint. Uh, 
<laughs> okay. Like I was thinking about this one. No, sometimes you have to jog and then sometimes you have to sprint. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the tism runs in this one. <laughs> Type three cluster <laughs> something or other personality. Uh, okay, uh, the she ends up doing all sort of the the, the necessary um, uh, physical treatments and asks you if it's if this is a rush. Usually, your wounds are like after training yep. or something. This you weren't supposed to be training with anything, so it's. It, there's something yeah. that I'm concerned with. I'm going to Haven. Oh my. To look for my brother. He has gone missing. So yeah, a rush. Okay. Give me a diplomacy check. Plus three. <laughs> Mark in the chat, Emperor Champ! <laughs> Eight. <laughs> Eight. Okay, um... She casts a curing spell on you. Be careful. Haven has its own dangers. I will be armed and armored. Try not to start a war. Okay. Thinks about that for a minute and nods. Hey. Blessings be with you. Bolai's missing. Something did bad. Somebody did bad by him, which means they started it. <laughs> Correct. She's right. I finished the war. <laughs> right. Yeah. This is, these are his thoughts as he's heading to go kid himself out with a ridiculous number of weapons. Okay. Uh, you make your way. So to his the... allotment of weapons includes uh, his favorite masterwork longsword called Cutter, a masterwork steel shield, uh, a steel tower shield, a large dagger, about twelve javelins, some potions of cure light wounds that he has that I imagine he's collected over time, uh, and his masterwork breastplate. A stone carved holy symbol of a nom. I assume this came with him from the giant island. Uh, yes. Okay. He goes and fetches that and puts it on underneath his breastplate. So. Yeah, you know that the um, <clears throat> they haven't taken it away from you, but you know that they don't like you wearing that around the temple. It's yeah, oh. it's underneath the breastplate. Yeah. Okay. You gather your stuff. You see, uh, as you leave, uh, you Do see... Do I bump into Uma? Uh, Uma, uh, roll... I will roll. Yes, you do. Bola is missing. Mm. Um, Chuck, That's not good. Chuck came with the news. Yeah. I think I'm going to go find him. Masters have already given... The Emperor... <laughs> um, the madman he is quite mad we should in all due haste um, we should be if, if Bolai is missing we should go check on him there's only a few of us left yeah I grab my alchemy kit and all that all that jazz too now, remember, we are, as much as we are guests of the, the Shattered Refuge and the Monks of the Shattering Palm, we are also guests of the Haven. Hmm? How so? We live here, well, not there. We trade with Haven. Okay, so they're our friends. Yes. It's not, but Bulla is in charge. Well, Bulla is it's, it's complicated. 
Life isn't as simple as it is on our little island. Everywhere you go, there are more dangers and interactions that are much more complex than ours here. I understand, Black Dog, it is nice here. It is simple, it is straightforward. Not everything is simple and straightforward. Do you know people in the village? I've met a few. I don't. Well, I know Bulleye. Maybe you should come. Uh, maybe I should. <laughs> she, uh, she drops her... Uh, you described her as always getting along with people? <laughs> yes. She's, yes. Got, she's got ranks in diplomacy and shit. She's got ranks in diplomacy Fine. and shit. Fine, come be useful. <laughs> That's what Black Dog... I'll, I'll be waiting by the gate. You know, if you were able to handle some of this stuff, you might be able to graduate. You know? Be a full monk. There's more to it than just smashing things. Although it is a good skill to have. No, it's not. <laughs> you have to smash harder and harder bricks to go to go up in levels. <laughs> You see a Burchuk there. He's sitting. He's actually sitting. He's nursing his hand. <laughs> oh, I think I dislocated a finger, man. <laughs> oh, 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 uh, hey, Uma. How you doing? She's coming with us. Oh. She knows people in the village. Hmm. My boat's only so big, but, you know, let's let's go. Might have to, you know, share a bench with Uma. That'd be fine. Be nice. Black Dog gives him a look like, don't push it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, I, a Charles DeLille. I've never had an impure thought in all of my existence. Oh, praise be the emperor. Watch out for his left hook. <laughs> he knocked his head clean off. The healers had to come in and pick it up. <laughs> okay. The... In Haven, uh, with the at low tide, you're able to basically take small boats back and forth between Haven and the the, um, uh, the Shattered Refuge. Uh, it is a relatively poor city that is like just wedged between a mountain line and a uh, uh, like the ocean. The waters outside of, of about one day per month are very tumultuous. Okay. You're taken to this town. Ah. <sighs> So, uh, how are we going to find Bolai? Doesn't Chuck live here? Yeah. I don't know where he is. That's why I came here. That's why I, that's why I brought you. <laughs> where's, we, Bo, where's Bolai's abode? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Emperor Chuck takes you to a, uh, it's a, it's a very humble, small home. Okay. Um, it's like a, apartment above a restaurant um, there is hustle and bustle and people are doing all random things and in, and in your view they're all highly inefficient Black Dog stands outside you go talk to the people who work here of course I'm going to go look up in his, in his house. Perfect. How, uh, many, how many ways in and out? You just ask you him, mean, Chuck? Uh, by the way the, uh, the Emperor walks, or by, you know, some dastardly means? <laughs> Black Dog snorts. Uh, stairs, door, two windows, 
and actually hatch in the room in the in the ceiling that comes through. Uh, that if you really are trying to worm your way in. Uh, All right. Well, Black Dog's <laughs> gonna go around back, I guess. See if just take a look at all the ways in and out. Yeah, there's basically a, a set of stairs on the outside of the building that leads up to its own entrance. You don't have to go through the restaurant to get to the, to the okay. building. And so we're going to hold on to Chuckles here. Um, and he's going to have a look at the ground around. Like, he was basically start tracking. Um, this is something he's actually pretty good at. Okay. I mean, relative to the other things he can do. <laughs> Twenty-seven, not a bad roll. Okay, um, yeah, it looks like um, um, people have been in and out of out of this particular place. It has rained recently, so the the track's a little bit rough. Um, you don't expect it's like men. You can see bull eyes tracks because he's got like really really broad tracks. Um, give me a second roll. Yeah, I'm looking at the the tracks leading up and down the way into his apartment. Mm -hmm. 16. 16? Uh, You think there's a second set of larger-than-normal man tracks also that have gone up there? Wait, where does... um, What's his... What's his chub live? Uh, Trudewin? Yeah. Does he live in Haven as well? Or should have You haven't been keeping tabs on him. Uh, you ask. Yeah. Should have um, been here. Why well, he's I mean, he's mostly on the outskirts. People don't tend to like him. He's kind of you know bossy. Yeah. Yeah, he is. He's like looking at a bird chuck. <laughs> Did I say the wrong thing? I mean, no, everybody he, knows he's kind of thick. Uh, so it looked like the, he had a visitor who was also a half giant or really big. Okay, yep. we're going to go up the, stick, the stairs. Okay. Uh, you go up the stairs. You get to a door. The door is locked. How is it locked? Barred or is it like intricate lock? Oh, intricate is a bit of a, a an overstatement. There is a simple lock. Black Duck looks around. Uh, Uma is in the restaurant talking to people. Uh, you hand up that bud. Stand back. Why? Why, why would we be standing back? Black Dog's gonna um. Aijitsu focus the, the door. <laughs> so, you could also use Aijitsu focus in preparation for striking an inanimate object. Kind of like the, the classic I break the board sort of thing. Yep. Assuming no distractions. Um, the extra damage is applied to objects. Okay. So... In a flash, there's a, uh, a basically I'll use the pommel of the of the oversized longsword, but in a flash the thing is out, bang, and I'm hitting I'm hitting the door, particularly okay. around the lock to try to get in. Uh, let's make an Iujitsu Iujitsu focus roll. Uh, we're also gonna power attack. Twenty five is a pretty good roll. Okay. So I will add, uh, looking at the table, 4d6 to the damage. <laughs> yep. And then the damage with a with cutter uh, power attacking. It's 2d6 plus 7 for two-handing, plus 3 for power attack, plus 4d6 for uh, Iujitsu focus. Um, we'll have, we'll spend a round of rage too. 35 damage. Fuck! You, you obliterate this poor door. (laughs) Chuck is looking at you like, he's he's got some little things he's pulled out of his pockets. Oh. He Um. then, he then 
shakes any of the debris off the sword, like the the sword pommel, and then just puts the sword back into its into its sheath. Remind me never to. When we do get back to the mainland and my palace and all of my servants, remind me not to. You would use the guest house or the guest guest house, not you know. Okay, black dog will take twelve seconds to breathe heavily. Go right there. Sound like a hyperventilator. <laughs> he just calms his breathing, and then pushes the shattered door open. <laughs> going on in here three uh anybody who sees you vandalizing the door doesn't care <laughs> okay inside there is a rather um humble looking room um it does have um like giant size like oversized furniture the beds here are actually like there's a bed that's like a proper size it's been a long time since you've had a proper size bed but you tend to like sleeping on the floor anyway. Um, there's furniture that fits. There's a like a like a wardrobe that has some clothes on it. Um, give me a survival roll. Yeah, he's gonna go like go touch the bed to see if it's still warm. And well, it's probably not because the dude pants had to come out here. Eleven. Eleven. Um, there's. Nothing obviously out of the ordinary. It obviously hasn't been like ransacked, um, but like the main, like what you would call like your adventuring gear is gone. He has more possessions than you do. Um, as in, but he, he, his weapons and things are gone. His weapons and things are gone. Mm. <laughs> He'll look around. He'll look under the bed. He's not here, man. I could have told you he wasn't here. You didn't have to break the door to find out he wasn't here. Why did I come again? He says some word in a language you don't understand. It's really pompous sounding language. Yep. He looks underneath the bed. In the closet. Like just... Hey, give me a uh, percentile roll. <clears throat> Ninety-four. Ooh. Okay, give me a uh, another percentile roll. Yeah, forty-nine. Forty-nine. Mm -hmm. Under the bed, you find a. There's a there's a weird package with a name tag on it. Okay. What's this? It's it's wrapped uh, in, a, in in a nice cloth. He reads he speaks and reads Jade Tongue Giant and Lingua Flotsam. Um I imagine he's picked up Lingua Flotsam from from Chuck E. Cheese here. <laughs> <laughs> from Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> He, Chuck E. Cheese has been trying to teach you this really pompous sounding language. You just kind of refuse to learn the pompous one. <laughs> the Emperor really likes it if you would speak this one, and you've, you've met him halfway. <laughs> uh, there's a... Um, it says, To Esmeralda? Love Bokai? On it. Who's Esmeralda? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, uh, how do you know about her? Uh, oh, well, I, th that would be uh, that would be well, uh, Bolai's squeeze trying to make the main piece. She's trying to take the side piece and make it the main piece. He's trying to, you know. Bring the bishop out to play. Speak plainly. He's this trying is... to please the emperor. This is no time for a language lesson. Who is Esmeralda? She works downstairs. She's a nice girl. 
Okay. If Black Dog brings the package with him. Okay. <laughs> hey, you 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 have a gift for Esmeralda. Okay, he goes downstairs to see what uh, Uma's up to. Be be closes the door as much as that. <laughs> Uh, okay, um, Uma's, uh, you, you can hear Uma, oh, thank you, thank you very much for, thank you very much for your time. Uh, uh Uma meets you outside. Is there a woman named Esmeralda there? Yes. This I found in Bull Eyes. <laughs> Aren't we nosy? Also, I heard a slightly loud th- cracking sound. Was that you? The door was stuck. Ah. <laughs> Emperor be praised it opened. <laughs> he brought his he brought his weapons with them. There's signs of another half giant or someone very large traveling with him. Ah, this appears to be some sort of gift. Should we give it to her? Can I, I, I mean, what did they, they say in there? Did he get food? When was the last time he was seen? He hasn't been seen for three days. Mm. See, I only knew it was two days. I didn't think of talking to Esmeralda about it. I was just, you know, was there anyone with him? I have a sneaking suspicion Shidi Wen was with him. Uh, they've been having some troubles with. Some local thugs making trouble here in Haven. <laughs> Black Dog, Black Dog like, chuckles like, yeah, this is going to sound like fun. <laughs> Some <laughs> extracurricular training. <laughs> this is what the training's for, right? This is what the training is exactly <laughs> what the training's for. Some thugs. Yeah. Uh, apparently some um, yeah. deserters from the Iron Kingdom, or the Iron Warlords, uh, the Iron Warlords. Um, have made their way. I don't know. Something about a shipwreck. Um, yeah, these waters suck. <laughs> okay, he hands the he hands the gift to to Uma. Did I ever tell you about this? My, my boat. My boat was so big and beautiful. It was gold and crusted across everything. And the, the figure piece had the biggest pair of. There's no time for that. Um, <laughs> he gives the package to Uma. <laughs> I think maybe he liked her. <laughs> Chuck is nodding. I just I said, "Hey, this is this is a fine silk." Oh, she opened it. No, she's like the outside. The, oh, okay. It's wrapped in silk. It's uh, she hasn't opened it. Uh, well, I'll hold on to this. We will. We will let Bolai. It's it's a thing of value that now that the door is broken, we just don't want to be leaving inside. <laughs> we don't know how the door broke. That that would no, no idea. <laughs> no, black dog broke it. He he, no. he he take the whipping for it. Ah, uh, all right. He did um, note that nobody came rushing in and this this place is no. It's not... a, it is a it is a rough. It is a rough place. Uh, do we know where uh, Jin, or sorry, what's his name? Uh, Shida Wen li- lives. Uh, Chuck knows. He's got this this nasty looking cabin on the outskirts of town. I'm this sure, is... and, and I'm sure the tracks lead out into the street or something like. Yeah, they, they lead out into the okay. street. It's right. like a, it's too busy for you to obviously. Do they um, go in the direction of Shida Wen's or? Where does Shidi uh, Wen sleep? Oh, oh uh, he, uh, he, he he's scratching and then he's pointing with like the other hand and he's kind of trying to obfuscate it in a, in this weird way. Yeah, blah, 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 moves an inch back from the from the. He's a little wary of the hand movements. Fucking. Almost bloodied by a single punch from Emperor Chuck. Yeah. All right. 